Good day, all of you. Wonderful to see you again. And we trust that you had a good week. So we are going to start a new series. And uh, the series is about our freedom in Christ. And this is very exciting because we are going to discover many things. And I, I believe that many Christians and even many leaders of churches are struggling with the subject of freedom. But uh, we shall see from Scripture as we go along, week after week, that freedom is uh, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to his children. So the first session, I'll be talking about our freedom to choose, to choose. We are able to choose our actions. We are able to decide what we want to do. This needs to be very clear. We are going to start from the beginning. And we open our Bibles in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Because we want to know the heart of God and how the Lord deals with his children. God is not a tyrant or a manipulator or a legalist in such a way where we can't decide anything, we can't choose anything. So in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, we see after he had created a man and a woman, Verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And what do we see? We clearly see that God asked Adam and Eve not to eat of the kind of tree because if they eat it, they shall die. So God gave them the freedom to decide either to eat it or not to eat it. They were free. They were in the garden. God created them. But God made them a free man and a free woman who had now to decide to live according to what God tells them. It's not because God tells them to do something that they are no more able to decide. And it's the same thing. Now let's see what happens to us as Christians. When we are born again, we become children of God. And a relationship starts between God the Father through Jesus Christ, his Son, with the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and each one of us. That's the type of relationship that God has with us now, his children. 
is our Father. Jesus is our Lord. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And we are children of God. That's, that's the relationship. It's the same thing. When we look at the Scriptures, at the New Testament, what do we see? That God gives us freedom to choose, to decide. He gives us choices. And each one of us, we are responsible before God to decide if we want to do right or wrong. Amen. We have the right to decide. God is not going to tie us down to some pole or put us in prison if we say, no, I want to do something that is not right. He's not going to stop us. He will try to stop us. That's how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. He warns us of the dangers. When our flesh wants to do the wrong things, the Holy Spirit is right there with us, in us, to encourage us not to do the wrong thing. But at the end of the day, it's our decision. It's our choice. Either to do the wrong thing or not. So we, we, we spend our days, every day as Christians, with choices, with challenges. And it's up to us to decide. That's why God gives us that freedom. So how does it work? God gave us his word. That's the first thing. He gave us his word. And the second thing that he gives us, the Bible tells us, tells us that the Holy Spirit comes and abides in us. So when we have the word of God, we have all the guidance that is necessary, all the direction that is necessary, all the instructions that is necessary for us to live our Christian life. And the Holy Spirit is the one who will teach us. We've got the Word of God, and we have the Holy Spirit in us. So, as the Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us in our walk as a Christian, we have to decide. We have the choice. We always have to make choices. That's why we need to understand that this relationship between God and us, between the Father and His children, is on the basis of freedom. Amen. We are a free people. And many Christians or even leaders of churches do not want to accept that we are a free people able to decide. What do we want to do with our lives as Christians, as children of God? What do you want to do with your life? What do I want to do with my life? It's up to me. It's not up to God. God will tell me, that's why we need to understand that the, the New Testament is not a book of law. Amen. No. The New Testament is not a book of law. It's a book of instructions for us to follow if we want. But God expects us to follow. He expects us to follow all the instructions that are written in the New Testament. But we must not consider the New Testament as a book of law where when God says something or when the apostles wrote the epistles, we are obliged to do them. 
No. We are free. We are a free people. You can be a young person, you can be an old one. Whatever your age, as a Christian, you are free Amen. to choose. And we see that every day. Every day we see that. God will not force us to do anything. He will not oblige us to do anything. He will not take our hand and force us to do the right thing. When we are in the body of Christ, we are not in an army. You know when you are in the army, you have got to do what your surgeon or the caporal or whosoever tells you to do something. You can't avoid not to do. Because then you'll be in big trouble. You have to do it. And you know you have to do it. And you know you are obliged to do it. You know it. But when you are a child of the kingdom of God, you are not obliged to do it. You are instructed by the Holy Spirit who teaches us what is written in the New Testament. Yes? And we all have the right to decide. Look at the body of Christ. What do we have in the body of Christ? Christians that obey, hmm? that understand that God is their authority, that Jesus is their Lord, that Jesus is their master, hmm? and their heart is in unity with God, hmm? and they walk in submission, and they walk in obedience to God. To his word. But in the kingdom of God, we also see many Christians that are carnal, that know the Bible like each one of us know the Bible. What is right and what is wrong. You know, when you are Christians, you don't have to know the Bible by heart to know what is right and what is wrong. Because the Holy Spirit who is in you tells you what is right and what is wrong. When you want to do something that is not right, the Holy Spirit tells you. And sometimes you go and discover that it's written in the Bible. That's how it works. You see? So in, in, in the body of Christ, you've got all sorts of Christians. Carnal Christians who decide not to follow the instructions that they read that the Holy Spirit teaches them yeah. how they sit in church mm -hmm. and the man of God preaches the gospel, the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. They listen. They know it's the truth. But in their everyday life, they've got other choices. You see, we don't only have one choice. We have the choice to do the right thing according to God's word. And as we walk with God, and as in our daily walk, we find out that there are things contrary to what God wants us to do. Hmm? And we have a battle in us between the spirit and the flesh. We have that constant battle. And we have to decide. We have to decide. We have to make the choice. <laughs> and God is not going to stop you. Going to help you not to do it. His grace will be with you. The Holy Spirit will warn you. But he's not going to put something in front of you so that you cannot do what you decide and what you have chosen to do. So we have the freedom 
to decide and to choose. Every day of our lives, in our relationship between brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, children and parents, in our daily walk, we have options. Every time, every day, we have options. So what does God desire? He desires submission and obedience. And he wants us to know that he is the boss. Jesus is the master. Jesus is the Lord. Amen? So I told you earlier that the New Testament is not a book of law. It's a book of instructions for us to follow. But the New Testament is also a relationship. It's a relationship. And that is one of the most important things for us children of God to understand. You know, this book is not just do this, do that. There's a relationship between God, between the Holy Spirit in us, and us as a people, as a person. That's more important to understand hmm? that this book is a book of relationship between God and you and me. Amen. A relationship of the heart. That's why it's not a book of law. Amen. Because it's a relationship between the heart of God and our hearts. That's the difference. That's the difference of the new between the New Testament and the Old Testament. Hmm? It's not just obeying black on white because we are obliged to do. It's a relationship between God, between the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and you and me. Then you understand that you are able and you got the right, not only able, but the right to decide. The right to choose the way you want to go. Hmm? That's why we see carnal Christians giving their life to sin because they decide to. They have chosen that. Am I right? And those who walk a holy life, I've decided to. They have decided to. So, let me give you a couple of examples so that you can understand clearly. Because when you read the New Testament and you read the, the words of Jesus, clear. What did Jesus say to his disciples in Matthew chapter 16? Now, I would suggest that you know this verse, <laughs> and it becomes a part of you. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, desires to come after me, Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. So what do we see? We all have the freedom to decide either we are going to deny ourselves, take up that cross and follow Jesus or not. It's a choice. But the wonderful thing is that God has got a, always a good plan for us. And whatever he instructs us is for our good. Hmm? But it's clearly here. It's not an obligation. Either you desire to do it or you desire not to do it. 
So we see a choice. You take your cross and you follow Jesus, or you don't want to do it. You don't want to take it. You don't want to deny yourself. It's your choice to grow and become a mature person, or it's your choice to remain a baby and a carnal Christian. It's your choice. But God has planned for everyone to become perfect in Him. And He has given us every key, everything. He has instructed us where to walk on, what road to walk on, what we need to do with our lives. And if you desire to do it, it will be for your good. But if you want to remain a baby, a carnal Christian, don't take your cross. Finished. <laughs> how many parents we've got here listening to me? And how many parents are sitting on, in, in their homes and you're watching this program? What is your responsibility towards your children? Huh? Is not there a call to sacrifice your lives for your children? Is not there a call from God Amen. to sacrifice your lives for your children? Yes. But what do the parents do? They have a choice. Huh? <laughs> I know many Christians who prefer to buy new fridges, new cars, new homes, new all sorts of new things. But they are not prepared to buy everything that their children need spiritually to grow and be prepared for the future. Yeah. Yeah. I ask you, you are listening to me. I wonder if your children know how to pray. Huh? I wonder in how many homes there are Christian books for children to look. How many, I wonder in how many Christian homes there are DVDs that you give to your children, that you buy good Christian music for them to hear. I wonder if Christian children have access to all that. But maybe they know how to open a new fridge. They like to ride in a new car. They are proud of having a nice, wonderful room and a double bed to live on. And all access to everything. It's a choice that the parents have. No one is forced to do anything for the children. And that's why many Christian children are in a mess today. Huh? They don't even go to church. They have not been, let's say, educated spiritually. Prepared spiritually yeah. as they grow. Some parents will prefer to give their children smartphones. <laughs> At the age of eight years old, it's their choice. It's their choice. Everyone's got a choice. Some Christian Parents allow their children to do what they want in the home under the roof of their Christian parents, free to do what they want. And the children do not even feel any authority in the spirit from their father, from their mother. They are free to do what they want. Go where they want. Dress how they want. Talk how they want. Watch what they want. It's a choice. 
How many Christian parents today correct their children according to God's word? How many? I tell you, you may be looking at me. If there are 1,000, 1,000 Christians, parents looking at me right now, I can tell you that most of you have never corrected your children. And what do you expect? You might think that they are good, nice, wonderful children, but watch. If there is no correction that comes from the parents, you never know what's going to come out sometime. Might as well deal with this rebellion right from when they are small. <coughs> choose life. Don't choose death. Amen. Choose light. Don't choose darkness. <laughs> choose to obey and submit to God's word and not to rebel. Yes. To choose, choose to grow in Jesus and not remain a carnal Christian, a baby Christian. Choose to come and listen to the gospel in as the church of the Lord gathers together. But many choose to stay at home and not come to church. It's your choice. Choose to take your cross and not to ignore it. Amen. It's a choice that we all have every day in our lives. And I thank God that he Give us that freedom to choose so that every single Christian becomes responsible of his actions, of his words, and everything that he does. It's our own responsibility. Amen? Amen. Amen. Time is running out, so we've got, to, we've got to close now. So God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Amen. Thank you.